two months ago I shared with our viewers a story about a Veterans Cross memorial site located up on top of a hill way out in the Mojave Desert. This is where a man evidently was driving through the desert. He took a glance at the cross and claims he was highly offended. He and the ACLU then joined a lawsuit within the federal court. A federal judge ruled that the cross was inappropriate and ordered it to be taken down. However, thanks to the Legal Liberty Institute, they are defending that cross. And while it's in appeals, the United States Supreme Court has just confirmed that they are going to hear this case and will hopefully re render a decision very soon. In the meantime, the federal judge has ordered with a court order that that cross be covered and concealed in plywood. Isn't it interesting that the ACLU who demands tolerance does not display tolerance themselves? Rather than just talk or blog about this cross story, I decided to go see for myself. We're now en route to Mojave Desert. First thing in the morning when we arrive, we're going to hold church service there. We're going to celebrate the birth and resurrection of Christ. We're going to pray over the land. We're going to receive communion. We're going to read from the word of life. We're even going to have a beautiful song sung right in front of the cross. The person who's going to sing this worship song, his name is Marcea. He's my brother-in-law. I had the privilege of officiating his wedding ceremony to my sister Jennifer. We just had church and received communion. It was interesting. I got to worship our Heavenly Father with my earthly father, Bill Rett Sr., and, of course, my brother-in-law, Marcea. He's going to sing next. But Marcea is going to climb way up there. If you pan out, you can see the cross up there. This is the controversial site that is now covered in plywood. Ladies and gentlemen, my brother-in-law, Marcea. What you going to do when the world's on fire? Yeah, oh, what you going to do when the world's on fire? Yeah, oh, you know the last time God destroyed the earth, he destroyed it by water, and he said it'll never be water again. But the next time he's coming with retribution and he's going to destroy this earth by fire. Are you ready? Oh, oh, oh. tell me what you're going to do when the world's on fire. Oh, what you going to do when the world's on fire, yeah, oh, ooh, 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 what you going to do? It's the only nation that was founded on Judeo-Christian principles. Therefore, it is most appropriate that either the cross of Christ and or the Star of David should be allowed to be displayed on federal land or government property. I am ever so minded of the scripture about that cross in Romans 5, 8 that says, For God demonstrated his love so much towards us, in that yet while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. But the good news is, he is no longer crucified, and he has risen from the grave. History tells us that in one of the many fulfilled prophecies, that Jesus Christ rode on a donkey through Jerusalem on Palm Sunday. The donkey represents peace because Jesus is the Prince of Peace. However, it also warns us that there is an unfulfilled prophecy where Jesus Christ will return. And when Jesus returns, he's going to be riding on a white horse. The white horse represents judgment and war. Yes, Jesus is loving, graceful, merciful, and forgiving. However, he's returning as the just God. So the bottom line is, folks, only Jesus has the power to take the sting out of death. Only Jesus has the power to resurrect you from your grave. So when Christ comes back, or if you die today, which everyone comes first, I ask you this question. Whose side are you going to be on? The side of the cross, or are you siding with the ACLU? We report, and you decide. I'm Bill Retz, High Caliber News, Mojave Desert.